Unreal Engine 4.20 introduces a few important changes to the way the sequencer system works. So we're just going to take a quick look at some of the highlights. One of the biggest changes is frame accuracy improvements. Sequencer now stores all internal time data as integers. Basically, it enables support for frame accuracy in situations where it's a necessity. Things like your keys, your sections, your bounds, all your other data are always locked to the underlying resolution, the sequence, the FPS that you have set. So let me show you that. This is the older system. So we have our settings here. We could change it based on what we wanted to, 60 FPS or a time code. Maybe we wanted to set our snap to one second. You notice it changes to show that. But that doesn't necessarily mean that our information behind the scenes, our different keyframes, were going to be frame accurate based on our frame rate because it could use percentages, it could use floats. Now that it uses integers, it's going to be frame accurate. Now one of the biggest problems here is this is a little bit convoluted to understand and you have all these different settings and when you're changing things it doesn't necessarily change the way things work like 60 is what 60 seconds no i do 60 fps for example or and then what we have our well now it's now it's what in minutes seconds i mean now i can't get my fps back there we go 60 fps so it's a little bit of a pain in the butt 4.20 changes the way this works let me close my curve editor and we'll go ahead and look and here's our display you can see it's telling you it's sequence and it's using the tick resolution. So in this case, 12 FPS, 15 FPS, 30 FPS, 30 FPS, ticks at 60 FPS. Now the reason we see only a couple here now is you have the ability to change in the advanced options what you can display. So we can go to advanced options and now we have this new pop-up. So in this case, my desired tick interval is 60 FPS. Therefore, that's going to be my max. And it's going to show me it supports a few different ranges, shows how much time I have available to me for accuracy, 414 days. Now I could change this to, for example, 120,000 FPS, and now I'm going to get access to all my common rates. I'll hit apply. Now I have access to 12, 30. I have my film, my different um, TV types, you know, 29.97, 23.976, all your different common ranges. And then you have your higher ones, 240 FPS or even higher if you want to do custom, for example. So this is nice because it allows you to set your maximum limits to things that are common, and you have all these other ranges that you can set up. And it'll allow you to limit what does and doesn't show up. Like, for example, if you're going to use computers, traditionally you're probably not going to need a 29.97 frame rate. You're going to want to run 60 or something like that, maybe 120, 100. And it gives you the ability to change things when you adjust it here. So it's a nice advanced layout setting. Like I had 240, let's go back to 60. Okay. So now that we're running at that, you'll notice even though it shows 60 FPS, well, my display is actually showing time. You have the ability to choose. So you have show time as the non-drop frame time code, seconds, or frames. So in this case, even though I'm at 60 FPS accuracy, I am showing my time in terms of seconds. Or I can go back to frames and now I can see my frame accuracy. Now one thing that's nice about that is you, let's say we go drop down to 12. You'll notice something. Let's actually go to 60. You'll notice this shows here if I zoom in. Actually, let's zoom out. Every time I move it, my line here is indicating the frame that's being displayed. So for example, on my media track, we could see the exact part of the media that I'm watching. When you zoom in on the older version, we'll go back to that. It didn't really help to really show what is being shown. You have this little area here, so let's zoom in a lot. Each frame, the frame 5, frame 6, frame 7, is indicated by this width. This right here is what is being shown in that frame when you are playing the sequencer. Now in the newer version, when we zoom in, it's actually going to show you exactly in detail in this much easier scrubber method, what you're going to see. So when you have a large sequence and you're scrolled down farther, for example, you can easily see exactly what's going to be shown frame by frame accuracy. It's a nice little touch that they added in. In addition to this, you have the ability to change the clock source that your sequence is going to sync to. We have tick, platform, and audio. Audio should be self-explanatory. It's going to use the audio clock for timing. Platform and tick are... Basically, is the time dilation or the speed at which everything is running, your tick, your delta tick, going to be used for the timing on your 
sequencer. Tick is our default. We'll go ahead and set it to that. We'll go ahead and run our example here. And you can see our character slides to the right and slides to the left. He's using my setup right here, and it goes over, what, 240 frames or so? Nothing big. It works like we expected. If I run it again this time and I do slow-mo 0.1, you notice he immediately comes to almost a halt. I'm now running at 10% of my normal speed for the sequencer because we're using the default tick for our clock source. Now let's change this to platform. This is not going to honor tick or pause state. We'll go ahead and play this again. We'll do slow-mo 0.1. No difference. Our sequence is going to run at the expected 60 FPS. Even though we are slowed down, we're going to get our 60 FPS like is what we expect. And that's kind of one of those things that's important with the change. So you can have your sequencers run back. So if you have something like a special event happening and your character is slowing things down or you need something to run at normal speed no matter what, maybe affect, you know, it's a personal preference. You now have the ability to change the clock source. So that's kind of nice. One of our other updates is a media track has been added for the sequencer. So up here I have a media track. If we were to play this, we look over here. I have a media track that plays back. We can scrub through. We can see different things happening. So our media track itself, if we open it up. Actually, I pulled out the media track, so that doesn't help. That would be why it wasn't playing. So we have a media track that can play back right here and let's go to our properties we'll set it to their media texture and our media track plays back that we can see over there it's upside down but it's playing back now technically if anyone's paying attention they may be stopped thinking to themselves oh well the media track was there before it's not new in 4 to 20 and you're right i honestly don't know why it's in the notes it was here in at least 419 if not earlier but it's in the release notes hey everyone media track is new in sequencer you can use WAV files, WAV files. You can use MP4 files or other supported media formats. Traditionally, they recommend something like an EXR individual frame format, so that way things can stay in sync frame to frame, and you don't have any weird issues. One of our last thing is we now have the ability to have weighted tangents on our curves. Okay, well, what's that? Well, here's the old curve editor. We'll turn it on. We'll look at our curve. Here's the ability to adjust our key point our frame, his ability to move our tangent angles, and well, it's only going to be this area from our, our tangent point to our frame and our frame to our tangent point that we can adjust. Sure, we can right click and we can break it apart, we can adjust them independently, but we still only have a set weight. In 4.20, we now have the ability to adjust that. So let me turn on my curve, and here's our curve here. You'll notice our curve itself is a little thicker now. We also have this little menu here. Instead of having to right click, we can adjust everything nice and easily in our little pop down keyframe. And we have our toggle weighted tangents. Here's our old version, not as much fun. Here's our new version. Oh, look, we can now pull our tangents out. We can adjust them independently of each other if they're broken, or we'll go back to auto and we'll adjust them together. Oops, we actually need to turn weight back on. There we go. And you can see, and it gives us the ability to get a nice, smoother curve rather than our fixed individual curve, maybe where we needed more key points to get what we want. Now we can just adjust it with a nice weighted curve. And that's it. Those are going to be some of our bigger changes for the sequencer system in Unreal Engine 4.20.